Hey everyone, it's Dr. DeCubles here from Main Street Chiropractic, and today I'm here with Todd. He's the owner of Cadence and Foxtail in downtown Downers Grove. Todd, how are you doing today? Great, how are you? Good, good. So I wanted to come in here and talk with Todd a little bit because since he owns two restaurants, and obviously the restaurant industry has been impacted a lot in the last year, I wanted to kind of get his take on what specifically has been going on with him, and that way we get a better understanding of kind of what we're dealing with. So first off, obviously this has been a much different year for you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, the first question is, with everything that's been going on, it seems like there's been different updates coming on all the time. How have you been able to get the updates coming? Like, is it easy? Is it difficult? Kind of walk me through that. So, uh, from the updating standpoint, I mean, it's literally, I mean, I go to the IDHP every website every day. Right now, so I'm checking positivity rates and I'm trying to understand you know, where we are and what the metrics are. I mean, there's, a, there's another site too where I can actually drill down and see what the positivity rate in 605 is and 605 so we can get what our actual direct community is plus we can float in different zip codes. So it's kind of neat to be able to do that as well. Um, so the information's there and it's, 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 you know, pretty clear. So, I mean, but you've gotta, you gotta go get it. It's not coming out, like it's, you know, like it's not just being, laid out for you. Know, it requires some work. Yep, absolutely. That, and that's one of the unfortunate things is with all the new relations then you are then required to figure out what they are and it's not very clear cut. Yep. Okay. And I think that's one thing people don't really get is, is just how difficult it is not even dealing with it but figuring out how to deal with it. So what's like, what would you say was the first when we take, go back to like let's say March of last year. Sure. What was the first like big change that you had to make? So uh, we opened Fox Hill on, on uh, February 28th. On March fifteenth, Governor Pritzker Sunday, Sunday, March fifteenth, Governor Pritzker uh, announced um, the shutdown um, effective March seventeenth. So um, we we sat. My partner and I were actually working, and then we sat down and we said, "Okay, we need to we need to shut down. You know, we need to reload." So we immediately grabbed the menu and ran over to Cadence and we were box. So we ran over and grabbed the menu from Cadence and from Fox so. And we decided to shut down Cadence completely. So um, we took all of our staff and continued to support them and pay them. And we brought more Fox so that were limited shifts. Um, we really took care of our staff. We were closed here for 75 days um, at Cadence. And we, uh, Ran what we affectionately called Fades. <laughs> so it was, a, 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 it was kind of the greatest hits of Fox Valley and Cadence. Um, come uh, end of May, uh, we were able to um, do outdoor dining. Um, so initially, the first 75 days was just straight, completely shut down, only delivery. And uh, end of May, we, we were able to do outdoor dining. And then um, there was Safety concerns on the first of June, um, where both there was some looting at both Best Buys, both on 75th and on um, Butterfield. So we had two full patios. And myself had to, and my staff had to go and ask everyone to leave right around two o'clock on that Sunday. Um, yeah, it was scary, scary. You know, we were nervous of you know looting and rioting, and we we were you know it was a scary time. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> Well, and going back to, to that, when you talked a little bit about like delivery, I'm assuming that you weren't necessarily set up to be a delivery restaurant. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I mean, it's really, um, really, it's certainly a very unique and a big learning curve, right? So automatically we went from having a restaurant, you know, let's say with uh, 50 tables or 45 tables to um, no tables. And then not knowing how to gauge, I mean, that first week was just, was, was just, insanity we didn't realize the, the outpouring of support from the community which was amazing and then we also didn't realize that everyone that eats at home wants to eat between 5 15 and 6 15. <laughs> so we had massive slews of orders we, and we just you know did our best to figure it out and then figure out how to create that proper timing because it's just not something that we we're set up for we figured out how to change in our in our point of sale system so that people when they were ordering they could get realistic expectations on when the food was going to be ready. You know, we could make sure. I mean, again, the menu changed significantly on things that would would travel better than others, right? I mean, 
and we just really kind of try to navigate. I mean, oysters is not something that has a mainstay at Foxtail, but it's something that doesn't travel. Right? Right. So we really had to think about how to, you know, we talk about packaging, and, and um, unfortunately for what we were doing, there really wasn't a, a green option that was, that made any kind of economic sense. So even, and even with the extra money, we couldn't find something that, that carried and traveled well. Um, so, you know, trying to find the right containers, trying to find the way the food could look nice when it got home, you know, and then, and of course, incurring additional costs, you know, instead of washing a plate, you're talking about, you know, a dollar for a little to-go container or silverware or whatever, those, those things are going Right. right. Now, now, how did you go about it? Did you decide, hey, I'm just going to hire a bunch of delivery drivers, or did you go with one of those delivery services, and how did that work? So, we initially started quickly with, uh, a delivery service and I cut them out just as quickly uh, and then we used our in-house staff so again with, with being able to keep really we kept over 60 employees going through that first shutdown we were recipients of the PPP and we paid them what they had been making before and so we we were able to really support our staff and keep everybody going with that and happy which is really our tenant philosophy you know is our family which is you know all the, all the people that we get to work together with Right. And that's, that's amazing to be able to do that too. Um, so let me ask you this, going back to what you talked about, about the times of people ordering and everything. So pre-COVID, what was your, what was the time that was the most busy and then how did that, how quickly did you see that change with the shutdown? All right. Uh, the times initially from, for our restaurants really were busy from, you know, on a normal night from six to, six to nine. And it would slowly trickle and then kind of swell around 7, 7.30, particularly in the summer a little bit later, you know, it's nice out, it's bright out, people are going to do their stuff. Um, winter, we are a little, we hit quick a little earlier, but with COVID, it was literally, people started ordering at 4.45, and literally at, at 7.30, there was not an item on the board. Wow. So it was all, all of our sales went right into that kind of hour and a half mark. Two hour mark right between five and six thirty. That's crazy. Yeah, it's so that, those first couple of days were were interesting to say the least. They certainly were. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so talking about I mean, that's one thing too is when, when we talk about a restaurant like Gates, for instance, a lot of it is about the way that the food is shown on the plate as well. So going to delivery kind of changes things up. So did you create any new menu items out of all of this from necessity? Um, eventually. Uh, we f we figured out how to make first through finding the right containers, right, which was a process. But also we figured out how to try to make our it look as great as we could. Um, from a new menu driving innovation, there were yeah there were new menu items that we again at both were so seasonal at both restaurants were changing our menu so frequently that we definitely found things that we thought traveled better than others. We found that. We were doing. We did. We certainly bumped up some of our uh, our sushi and our and our poke bowls, which have turned into like kind of a, another big mainstay, which we didn't see, which we didn't see coming. Right? We didn't we didn't recognize that that was going to be a main part of our of our food mix. Um, and really, COVID kind of really punched up the, the poke bowls and the sushi. So going on that, was there a menu item that was really popular before that? lost popularity for delivery at all? Sure, I think any, uh, I mean, for sure, there's food that just doesn't deliver very well, right? I yeah. mean, like a scallop, if it sits in a covered container, it's gonna steam, it's gonna get rubbery. And like a rubber bouncing ball, which is, so I'm sure many people have had that at a restaurant, it's because it's overcooked and it, and it doesn't, so scallops don't travel well, so they came off of me. The oysters don't travel very well, you know, the liquid, the liquor falling out of the shell and, they're not the same. So we really kind of added and subtracted based on what we knew could be great to eat at home. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, another thing that kind of came up out of this um, is that you also had the ability to do like to go cocktails, to go drinks and things like that. Yeah. How does that work? Because you weren't able to do it before, so now we're talking about a container issue as well. And so walk me through kind of how you handled that. That was, uh, again, as soon as we figured out that we could do it. Uh, initially, we were doing um, some barrel-aged cocktails in, in our in our rainwater jugs and, 
and that was a but that was a pretty strong price point because it was a you know full bottle of mixed you know alcohol and you know an old-fashioned or a barrel aged you know uh, long arm that what we were doing so we we started to recognize that um, there was a bigger need for like a two drinker or two to four drinks kind of kind of situation and so then then it was how do we make it look nice how do we get it people excited about it how do we get home and then how do we make it work right because ice and soda water and those kinds of things are a big part of, the, of cocktails and you know if you don't drink if you don't drink an, an old-fashioned on the, on the rocks it is you know much more concentrated so trying to educate our guests on how to do that and how to get them through and, and then giving them what they want right? our, our drink here Katie's throw on fire is a fan favorite, right? And so trying to get that so that people can recreate it at home, have it at home, you know, just to just put up and increase, you know, kind of their spend, you know, so I could get to something that could was financially viable. Right, right. right. So exactly. I went to Amazon and did a ton of research on containers and, you know, and found the right container and the right size and then the right lid and, the, you know, all those little things and just to try to make it so it, it was viable and made sense. Now, with everything that's gone on, all the different things you've had to go through and changes you've had to make, is there anything that you have now decided either through what you've seen people purchase or how you've seen them buying with delivery? Do you think delivery is going to be something you want to continue doing even if there's no restrictions or is it something you want to try to just stick with in person? So we created two ghost kitchens uh, back in, in October, November, again, recognizing that People weren't necessarily wanting to order, um, you know, a tahini salmon, you know, at home. Like that's not really what they were looking for. They were looking for more handhelds and sandwiches and shareable appetizers and things of that nature. So we really started to kind of. Um, so when I created this this particular menu, it's fly one of the cadence and it's uh, Felix and Fiona. So our mascots at both different locations then. Um, we, we, we really try to start to generate some interest around those things and it's items that we have on hand but aren't necessarily on our menus here, right? And we offer that through DoorDash um, and through in-house delivery. Okay. Um, so that was just kind of how we decided to try to combat, without totally changing the entire menu so that there was nothing left, you know, and our identities have been lost at both Gates and Fox Still and one of it do something still in the vein of cadence, but not necessarily something over here. So, you know, we did a bird with the top of the short ribs, and, you know, caramelized onions, and arugula, we, you know, like, we just kept trying to play around to get us to, um, you know, more unique, a more unique item that people are wanting to enjoy. Makes sense. Now, have you noticed a, a difference between the two restaurants as to either times when people are ordering or um, specific uh, things that like, like let's say cocktail wise, like more cocktails coming from this restaurant for that, or that when the outdoor seating was, more people would like to eat outdoor here at this time versus that. any difference between the two restaurants? Uh, yeah, and it's all weather driven, right? So, um, I mean, a couple of things. One, our tent, I mean, at, so for the summer, our patio at Cadence to me is the, is the most beautiful patio in you know in the world. <laughs> so I mean, it's just you know, and we have grand plans of going much much deeper and farther, making even more comfortable. But you know, just where, where the sun sets and the, the, where the sun is, it's just really it's really comfortable. And, uh, there's a good breeze, and uh, you know, sometimes we've got to work our way around the sun, but that's so some of our problems. That's okay, you yeah. know. Uh, and then. What we found at Foxdale was, um, as it got a little later, once that sun tipped over the other side of the building, we were good to go. But Foxdale, that patio, because of where it was situated, is pretty hot. Uh, so we noticed that that's just, that, so it was where you would think there would, it would be a little, so, and we're, again, working with um, a builder to try to figure out how do we, you know, get around that. Is it misters? Is it, is it, sales plus a pergola is it you know and then we have you know all the well, we have to make sure we're doing all the things the right way through with the village and all that jazz. so you know there's there's definitely some some mental gymnastics i'm trying to figure out how to make it even more comfortable and even better right right well yeah that's unfortunately part of it yeah right well yeah 
So let me ask you this too. Um, the two restaurants are obviously very different, just not only in their the way that they do food, but also in just the way that the buildings are, the just the whole atmosphere is a little bit different, similar yet different in a yeah. way. Um, what have you noticed? Uh, because one thing about where Foxtel is is it's right there, right on Main Street, great location, Maple and Main, right there. Um, but it's also in those brand new apartments that are gorgeous right there too. Yep. Um, so have you noticed uh, anything with like a lot of people just walking down and getting food or how have you, how, what have you seen versus, you know, here it's a bigger area versus there it's right there in like the heart of downtown? Um, yeah, I definitely, it's funny, uh, I feel like our customers are the same, only you start, we're starting to watch people gravitate towards one or the other. And it's it's like oh I've been to Cades three times but I, I haven't been to Foxdale in you know in a month but I've been to Cades once a week you know and it's like and but now that and that I'll have that conversation with my Foxdale you know and it's like so it's um it's interesting to see people gravitate to wherever it is that they feel more comfortable um which is I think is really which makes me proud because that was the idea I did not want to have I wasn't trying to just create a junior or cadence or a just slightly different, you know, whatever we hired, certainly a different chef, we had a different mentality of how we wanted it to, the food to lay out, uh, more vegetable forward, and more seafood forward, or here we're a little bit bent, more you know, coastal style cuisine, uh, or here we wanted a little bit, it's a little bit more, I would say, not Midwest cuisine, but, uh, you know, but definitely more, Globally influenced, but a little bit partier. So, um, but it's been unique to see people really kind of gravitate towards one of the other. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we're you know now getting close to a year ago. This happened. I mean, it's, it's crazy that time has gone by that quickly. Um, and it looks like we're getting closer and closer to where restaurants are going to be back to normal. Um, is that going to be like a weird feeling when it's like, hey, but we could just operate the way we want again? I would challenge normal is, <laughs> <laughs> as just in general. Uh, two things that I've learned about 20 in, in life and in the world in the past year is fair is no longer an operable word. Uh, fair is not something that you can you can bring up a conversation at the end of the stage because it's not fair. I mean, the way the disease hits and, and moves isn't fair, the, the, everything that's happened along the way isn't fair, it, it's, it's, it's just a part of the, part of the new world, right? And in regards, to, in regards to normalcy again too, I feel that's yet another word where it's, there, the new normal is, you know, regard, it, no one's got a crystal ball. So we don't know if we're gonna be wearing masks for the next two years, we don't know if, um, we just don't know. I mean, and science is constantly changing and evolving and we're finding out new things. And so you can, you know, there's been many sleepless nights of me trying to, trying to, you know, well, if, then, you know, A to B to C to D to Z. To, and uh, it's just been pretty, you know, again, it's been pretty, it's kind of exhausting because you're trying to figure out and strategize. I don't know what the new world looks like. I mean, right now, um, you know, 45, 45, 46 states are open in indoor dining. Um, and it looks like that's happening for us here very, very soon. Um, and it, you know, it, uh, it's, it's, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. I mean, I think patios are going to be a big deal. Uh, I think people are going to gravitate towards where they feel comfortable, you know? And uh, I think there needs to be a lot of respect and empathy and kindness to understand people on who they are and what they're, what they're going through. Sometimes it could be, they could have lost a, uh, a friend or a close one or a loved one to, to COVID and you need to respect that they are then obviously hypertension. There could be some other people that maybe have a different philosophy. And you need to make sure you're trying to keep all, everyone comfortable, right? You know, and so we are outside of safety and that's, that's and on the side of comfort for our more discerning guests, and you know that's what we have to do, right? And I mean, without being um, rude or overbearing, but we have to be firm. Hey, and uh, you know these are things that we need to do to keep our staff and, and you know our family safe and move on. I mean, again, I 
I wish I could tell you. I, I wish I knew what was going to happen in the next three months, six months, nine months. I, I do think that, um, you know, there's a way. Yeah. Which is, I, did, I wouldn't have said that a little bit ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of it has to do with just the community. I mean, down the community is, been a, they've been amazing. Yeah. Um, I know that just with, they're trying to really help out different restaurants. Um, because if they were not, you know, people that weren't willing to order takeout or delivery or, you know, they could have easily just said, you know what, we're just not going to support any small business or restaurants. Um, and I think that's been a, the one thing that's kept the restaurant business alive you sure. know, here because there's been, if you look at some of the places like in the cities like Chicago, a lot of the restaurants have just gone under because there's A, there's been more issues going on, but also B, there just aren't as many people there willing to help out as much. And, and that's, and I mean, it also speaks, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it speaks volumes of our community and how, how supportive we have, everyone is of each other and how do we continue to help do things move forward. It's been, it's been amazing. I mean, we did do some catering over Christmas and Thanksgiving and we got a lot of support with that. So that really kind of helped us, again, another shift in our business model on top of the ghost kitchens, catering, and, you know, um, but um, the, the community's been phenomenal. The support's been amazing, and I, I, I feel for you know, I mean, it, for us, we really took a look at uh, you know what it was going to cost if we shut down, and what it was going to cost if we stayed open, and what we needed to do to stay open, and, and uh, we 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 made we said let's at least stay open and keep our staff going because that was really our our other option was to you know at least we would it's a, if you close there's a finite number that you know you need to pay on a you know, monthly basis. If you stay open, you at least have an opportunity, hopefully, to, you know, at least get close to that number or, you know, hopefully beat it. But, you know, I mean, some weeks, you know, it's a bit more of a risk. But in turn, we get to fall, just keep our jobs and work together and, you know, get ready for when, when we get to the other side of this. Right, right. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this because I don't, if, if people haven't heard of Fox Hill Arcades, I mean, first of all, they aren't really that involved in downtown, I think, because uh, uh, very, very popular. But also, I just want to let people know kind of the perspective of what it's been going through from a restaurant owner's mind because it has not just been one decision here or there, it's been all these different things that have gone on. Um, but I want to make sure people continue to kind of know about you guys, support you guys because the food's amazing. And if you haven't been in here, I mean, this is just one of their rooms here at Cadence. And, it's just phenomenal, the, 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 everything that you've done here. So I uh, want to thank you for coming out. You know, um, well, actually, thank you for having me come to you because uh, this place is amazing. And uh, you guys should definitely visit Foxtail, visit Cadence, order takeout from there. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed with their food. So thank you for coming out, brother.